Hello everybody, this is Robin Mountain from Intub African Safaris. I thought I was going to have a split screen that I could see myself and then I give myself a big fright. Anyway, for those who haven't met me and my wife Stella, we own the company Intub African Safaris. And guys, we're getting more and more people and just to welcome you, thank you very much for joining us. I see Tina and um, thank you very much Tina for working so hard to get a group um, to um, to the gorillas this coming um, 2018. Tina, don't give up. I'm sure we'll get them um, with another itinerary that still is working on, and um, we're excited about that. All right, guys, um, please use the question panel. This morning I did a power uh, presentation with Stuart Lloyd Cohen, and um, the, the attendees were, were fantastic in, um, in asking questions. And remember, uh, the, the, the best way for me to find out what, what you want to know is by asking me questions. And something's happened there. <laughs> Sorry. You're still on. All right. I'm still <laughs> on, okay? My screen went a little bit funky. I'm not sure what you guys can see. If we can move on to the next slide. Um, to, today, I'm going to talk to you about, about traveling to East Africa. <clears throat> um, um, I've had the privilege, as, as some of you have known, to have climbed Kilimanjaro three times. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania. It is not in Kenya, um, although we can see Kilimanjaro very nicely from Amboseli, which is a, a national park in Kenya. And we look onto the mountain in Tanzania. Um, this is a wonderful landscape photograph that I took last year in um, in Tanzania, um, looking up into the looking up from the the Masai uh, from the Serengeti into the Masai Mara. Does anybody know what the word Serengeti means? There we go. I can wait for some some answers. The word Serengeti means wide open space. And um, this is one of the most beautiful things that you will see when you join me to the Serengeti. For those of you who are on here who have been with me to the Serengeti before, um, you guys can attest to the, to, the, to the vast openness of the Serengeti. All right. As we go on. And some of you have seen this, this slide that I, I, I quite regularly use of the size of Africa. Um, you know, we have certain politicians who've spoken about the country of Africa, but this is this is again just to reinforce the size of Africa that we're talking about. Remember, we have we have New York and 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 uh, Maryland on the um, east side here, and we have California on the west side. And hello, Jamie, in San Francisco. Thank you very much for doing the presentations for us for CCRA, and enjoy the cruise tomorrow. And if we look down on, 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 on the, at the size of Africa, if we look where we're going, it's, it's only one of the, of, the, of, the, of the Indian peninsulas that we're going to be going in East Africa. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, I'm going to go down every time. Right, um, as I mentioned, we are, Tony, my husband and I were married in Tanzania. Oh, oh Sarah, well, that's fantastic. I appreciate that. Um, I can ask you, well, um, in fact, I should ask you, Siri, whether you've climbed Kiliman Kilimanjaro or not. That would be, be fun to find out. Um, Sarah is one of our attendees, and she was just mentioning that her and her husband were married in Tanzania. And I can tell you, my wife and I were married in South Africa, mainly because we are fifth generation South Africans. Okay, Sarah, it's on your bucket list. Well, I hope I, hope I help you get it off your bucket list before you kick the bucket. Guys, I'm going to just explain to you where we're going. Oopsie Daisy, I apologize about that. We went a little bit hunky dory. Oh, oopsie Daisy. Um, what I'm going to be discussing with you today is Rwanda and Tanzania. This is where I had the privilege last year of taking Jamie Bundy, as I said, our agent in California, and we did we did the the, 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 the gorilla walk in Uganda. Lydia, if you're listening, thank you very much for hosting us in Uganda. And we also we, we, we walked in the impenetrable forest. We also walked with the chimpanzees up in this area. But what I'm doing this year is I'm offering four, four guided safaris to East Africa, which is going to be in Rwanda and in, Tan, in Tanzania. Um, in Rwanda, we're going to be walking with the gorillas. And Tanzania, because of the timing of the year and because of the location that we have, this is where we are going to see um, the migration. <clears throat> Again, just to, 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 to thank Gaylene, my assistant. Um, Gaylene is sitting next to me here. She'll come on camera shortly. But uh, there we go. Gaylene, come say hello to everybody. Hi to everybody. There we go. That's Gaylene. Um, this is a photograph that we are not actually sure whether Stella or I took the photograph. 
Um, we're both shooting with Nikon cameras now, and um, this is what you will be seeing when you join us on the safaris. This is the is the wheel, um, the spare wheel cover that we've used. We've actually turned it into a round cover. And when you drive on the vehicles that Ntaba African Safaris uses, this is one of the pictures you'll be seeing. But again, guys, just to let you know, this is one of the one of the, the average sunsets in East Africa. Whether you're in the Masai Mara or Amboseli or, or in um, in the Serengeti, this is this is something that we have the the privilege of seeing. <clears throat> right, guys, just to explain to, to you where and how most of us are going to be flying in from, from, from Europe. Um, there's a there, there very good KLM flight from Amsterdam into into well, it's spelled Kigali and it's pronounced Chigali. And if you say one of the two, you you're about right. We'll fly into Chigali, and then from Chigali we'll be going down. I just get a look on my map here. I've got some maps as well. We'll be um, we'll be visiting um, X for Rwanda. Now I think some of you see have seen that Stella and I have adopted a young boy to put through through schooling. In Rwanda, and we are. In fact, it was the cutest thing I said to Stella the other day. I'm going to. I'm going to take you to meet your son, and um, this is something that you can all get involved in when you travel with us. Um, besides the bras, the ladies' bras that we take to to Africa for the for the rape rape crisis centres and and the the women's shelters, um, we also take clothing and um, um, schooling equipment for the for the learning centre at Axe for Rwanda. There we go. This is a picture of Chigali. It's not a very good picture that I took. I actually took it with my cell phone as I was was driving out, and um, I was very very surprised myself. You know, if you look at Rwanda, it's a country that 20 years ago went through a terrible, terrible, terrible genocide. I don't I don't even know the words or the language to describe what um, one group of people, the same color, same look, same everything, could do to another group of people. And um, it's, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's an uplifting feeling to go back to a country so many years later, and to see the the development. And in fact, in 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 Rwanda, it is virtually a criminal offence to use the word Hutsi or Tutsi. You do not ask anybody what their ethnic background is. And um, this is, as I say, it's a, it's it's, a, it's an up and coming city. Um, it was been it was built built mainly by the um, by the Belgians. And um, the the roads in Rwanda certainly. I've just driven back from Cleveland, Ohio. I, in fact, I drove up there yesterday and drove back this morning to do a webinar for somebody. And um, if I look at some of the potholes that we hit, even on the highways, um, um, Rwanda has got some wonderful roads. There we go. <clears throat> this is what I mentioned as the transformation center. This is David, and um, David is my is my brother. And people look at me like, "Yeah, right." No, David is my brother, guys. Get over it. Can't you see the likeness? Um, and this is a wonderful experience. Again, as I say, that we have um, is to go to to go and feel the heartbeat of the country. The heartbeat is not is not just going to see the animals, take photographs, and carry on. The heartbeat of the country is going to meet the people and see and, and, and see the situations. All right. This was some of the fun that we had just to 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 be able to um, <clears throat> to meet the children, get involved in some of their lives. You can see Jamie Bundy in the back there. Um, she, she, she actually gave she gave one of the suitcases away that had 250 bras in them for the young for the young ladies and for the ladies who work at, at the orphanage as well. Um, I'm holding one of David's um, children, and again, it's just as I said, it's, it's such a privilege to go into an African country and to be so so well well accepted. <clears throat> Some of the great fun that we have, the pictures that we, we, we take. Um, is it up there? There we go. Some of the pictures that we take. This little kid was so cute. Um, the word for 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 uh, uh, for a white person in um, in the, a lot of the African language is is the equivalent to umlungu, which is the Zulu word umlungu. But in Rwanda and Uganda, they talked about umzungu. They put a Z in it. <laughs> this little kid was so cute, pointing at me and saying. Mzungu, mzungu. And this is just some of the fun that we have. You know, we get to feel and experience the heartbeat of, of Africa. <laughs> These are some of the projects that, that, that the, the Acts for Rwanda are involved in. And um, David, in, in, in so many ways, is doing such an amazing, amazing um, 
or creating such amazing effort with these ladies. And I just want to thank Linda Weir. If Linda is on is on the, the, the webinar at the moment, Linda, thank you very, very much for all that you have done and you are still doing for Acts for Rwanda. Um, they would not be where they are if it wasn't for everything that you have done and, and are still doing for them. All right. There we go. As I mentioned, that's some of the software that we took to, to Uganda. And um, some of the young girls didn't know what they were, of course. But um, as I say, the, the, the older kids and the, the, the women working at the orphanage, and of course, any of the other women involved in the orphanage, were, were extremely grateful and thankful for the gifts that we brought them. The love, as I mentioned, the love and the kindness. And this is, I'm actually hugging my son over there. And what was so interesting, do you see how loose his hand is as he's, as he's putting it around me? Pacific comes from a family where they have, he has three, three siblings. And all three of them are from, or all four of them are from different fathers. And when I hugged him, it was like hugging a lamppost. It was like like hugging a, a stop sign. He, he he didn't know a father's love. And um, you know, I'm just hoping that in many ways we're able to 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 just pass that love on to him, and um, you know, just 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 help him through school. Right there's Jamie again. That's that's one of David's children sitting in my lap, and just the feeling of. Being being welcome and being wanted is, is just a tremendous feeling in Rwanda. All right, as we start to to drive out through the through the landscape, you'll see that the, the tea orchards, and um, this is really great. You you stop on the side and you watch these guys clipping the tea, and um, it, they're just beautiful. In fact, while I was in Rwanda, I'm not sure if I had a dream about it or I just had one of my premonitions. One could really write a book, and I'm sure some of you will get a good little giggle out of this. But you could write a book in the Fifty Shades of Green. <laughs> the Fifty Shades of Green in Uganda and Rwanda. It's beautiful. I mean, if you just look at the different greens you see from the side of the road to way back on the mountainside, the eucalyptus trees, the, the, the silver oak, the tea that they're growing. It's a beautiful green country. Right, when we go out into the volcano area, if, if any of you have watched the movie um, um, Gorillas in the Mist, this is where we are, are going into the Baruga Mountains. You can see we have you have Rwanda down in the bottom here and Uganda across the border there. This is an aerial topographic um, photograph. So this is where we are walking in the in the in the in the foothills of the volcanoes. <clears throat> when we get into into the in in, in with the gorillas and we and we walk with the gorillas, it is it's a privilege. Yes, it's expensive. Okay, get over it. Seven hundred dollars for a permit to to walk with the gorillas. What what does that seven hundred dollars buy buy you? The next the next slide that you will see, you will see the, the 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 former poachers who have now become game rangers, and these men and women will, will will get into the forest in the early hours of the morning, and and find where the gorillas have nested and slept and spent that night, and they will they, on on their two way radios will let us know where they are. And we start trekking up the mountain towards them. We spend one hour with the gorillas, but really, in my lifetime, and I've done many wonderful, wonderful things. That one hour is worth more than a hundred hours doing anything else. As I mentioned, the slide coming up now are, are three three of the gentlemen that were former poachers that have now given in their in in their their, their poaching weapons, and they're actually carrying an AK-47. Former military from South Africa it feels a little bit ruffled up when I see that, but as I say, these guys are absolutely fantastic. You'll actually see their serial number on their on their clothing, and each guy has is, is recognised by a number. And there's a hierarchy of these gentlemen, and uh, without them, we couldn't do it. So as I say, you know, that's immediately seven hundred dollars for the day to walk with the gorillas. Walking with the gorillas, we, 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 don't, we don't actually physically interact with them, but we do. They, they will come close to us. Um, I try not to tell the story, but I had a gorilla that actually walked through my legs. Um, I had a lady standing on my right foot, and I couldn't move to my left or to my right. I was trying to move to my left to get to Jamie, and I couldn't do it. And all I could do was, was just straddle and make my legs wide, and this female gorilla walked right through my legs. Why don't I have a single photograph or a video of it? Because everybody was staring at what was happening. They were too slow to pick up their cameras. So again, as I say, this is where the gorilla, actually the gorilla and her baby, 
walked very close to us and this little baby on the back of the gorilla was was lapping it up. It was almost like it was like I'll do it for the camera. He was doing somersaults on his mum's back, and you know we do get those cutesy moments. Um, I often get asked the question: Is can I guarantee that we're going to see gorillas? Even when the weatherman says it's going to rain, are we going to get rain? What I will do is I will guarantee that I will take you to where the gorillas are. And um, honestly, um, so far we've had wonderful success. When, what what will happen when the gorillas have have have, have moved to a to to a certain, to to another area? It will take time for us to locate them, and it might be a longer walk that you have. Um, Melody Fee, who just walked the gorillas last month, month last month or the month before, had a two and a half hour walk to get to the gorillas. Um, Jamie and myself had a three and a half hour walk in in Uganda, in the impenetrable forest. Yet when we walked in Rwanda, it was just an, an hour, and we were up with the gorilla, up with the gorillas in Rwanda. So. Um, again, if you have to look at, at either country, where would I rather do the, the gorillas in Rwanda or Uganda? Right now, it is honestly a 50-50 split. I have a wonderful tour operator in both countries that we use, and um, uh, Uganda has a lot to offer with the source of the Nile, um, walking with the chimpanzees and the gorillas. Of course, we do get the chimpanzees and the gorillas in, in Rwanda as well. <laughs> I ask for forgiveness for my cup, but there's not much I can do about it. Eh? All right. This is just some of the photography one one can do. Anybody, and please don't even think of the question of 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 going hunting in East Africa. I will not. I will not entertain that thought at all. I'll probably beat you up for it. But um, walking, you know, taking your cameras in. This was was my own my my own picture. I shot this with the two to five hundred mil zoom lens, and you know anybody who wants to put this up on their wall when they get back, put this up on their po on their Facebook page. It's an absolute privilege that we have, as I say, to be able to walk with these guys. I'm sure you've heard the expression silverback. Now um, it, it, it's a lot easier to explain to uh, silverback to somebody in the same age group that I am, because if we look, we're all going a little bit silver somewhere, aren't we? And this is what what happens with this with this particular with this particular male. He'll get the silver band across across his back, and with it, when when this chap stands up, he is huge. I'm six foot two, and about two foot six broad. Now I'm not sure how broad I am. I wouldn't care, but when he stands up, he is he is six foot two broad. I mean they are big, they are huge, and you are very safe walking with them because they they, they have not they have not tasted human flesh. They are not going to eat you. Um, they are far more. They are far more interested in the berries that are flowering right behind you. So when he comes barreling down the path at you, it's not to it's not to harm you. He wants those berries right behind you. So again, that is something that we you know we we we, we are aware of that these guys we, we we are in their backyard and they are not in our backyard. Any questions so far as I'm going along with the gorillas? <clears throat> Please feel free to pop questions in any time. Hey. All right, this was a female. It was so amazing. She sat and she stared at me. One of those, I'm going to stare you out until until you move your eyes. And um, just uh, if, if any of you have read um, Timothy, I mean, um, the the Elephant Whisperer by Lawrence Anthony, you'll see the, the 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 interaction that we can have with 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 animals, the communication, and <clears throat> you know, once they once they start moving. Uh, it's an amazing experience to to see the animals in movement. It's not like you're in a zoo where you're seeing these poor guys kept in a cage, and all they can do is m walk up and down their cage, or in a or in a circus where they they're encouraged to do tricks. These guys are in their own habitat. Um, are we safe when we walk with the gorillas? Yes, we are. As I mentioned, we have the guides with us. We have the the rangers with us. They will let us know if there's any danger. What 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 would we do in the case of, of danger? We would all huddle as a group. Um, we have buffalo in in the forest. We actually walk along a lot of the buffalo trails, and this is why the guys will carry their their AK-47 with them. None of them are to shoot the buffalo; it's just to blast off a couple of rounds in the air. But again, safety, safety, safety. Remember when when I'm taking you on a safari, the most ex ex the most um, what I want you what I want you to to experience is something that is authentic. I'm not. This is not a zoo. We're not putting on. I can't call any gorillas by their name. Hey, George, come here, boy. It doesn't work. Okay. We are in their backyard. It's authentic. I want it to be memorable. 
um, as I said, I, you know, I've had many, many beautiful safaris in my life, and you know, this is something that lives with me forever. I want you to be intimate, and this is exactly what it is. When you, when you can almost feel the heartbeat. We, a lot of you will tease me, okay, but until you get into the, in with the gorillas, we actually talk to them. And um, Jamie, who's listening, I'm sure, knows how it is when when they go. <clears throat> that's exactly what you do back to them. And if he says, "You ugly looking son of a gun." You hope you haven't said that back to him, but you do. We, we do, we, we grunt and we growl at them as they grunt and growl at us. You know, the other thing, as I mentioned, secure. We want, I want to know that when I'm taking you to East Africa, you will be secure. Um, and then, of course, the other thing is I want you to be unique. Um, we, we, we are only allowed one hour, but in that one hour, I will try and get as many photographs of, as, of, uh, that I can of you with the animals as well. I've had my pictures taken. Now it's my turn to take pictures of you with the animals. <clears throat> Some of the, 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 the animal behavior and the, uh, the animal husbandry is really beautiful to see. And when you walk with these rangers who, who know the, 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 um, the, the troops very well, and this particular troop had had, had had twins, and one of the twins had died. And how they tell you the story how the mother, can, now this is, the, is a male here, yeah, it's a big male, but how the mother had carried the baby around for days with her, and until eventually the baby had rotted in, and the rangers were able to pick it up and take it for processing and so on. But um, when, when, when you hear those, those, those stories of, of, of that, you know, when we realize there's only 2%, and I don't want to pop anybody's religious beliefs here, but there are only 2% DNA between us and them, it's, it's a privilege to look in their eyes and say, hello, my brother. <clears throat> and then, of course, some of the fun stuff that we have as well, one of the slides that are coming up now, um, this little guy, I mean, when, when you see that, it's, it's an ooh-ah moment. That's when I don't need grandchildren, I've got baby gorillas. And um, this, 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 little, this, this little chap, unfortunately, had a twin brother, and the brother died of natural causes. But just again, to, to, to hear the family history when you're walking with these guys, that, you know, that's how well they know the, the, the animals in the bush. All right, other, other way. Oh, okay. And what is really rewarding is after we've done the gorillas, we've come out, we've <clears throat> we've experienced what, as I say, what to, what what to me is just just an experience of a lifetime. I mean, I've walked with the gorillas in in in, in Rwanda. I've walked with the penguins in Cape Town. I've walked with the elephants in 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 Kruger, and I've just been been extremely privileged to 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 have this in my life. But what we do is we go to one of the cultural villages, and this. The particular village is where the, where, the, where the former poachers have been trained as rangers. And some of these guys' wives, some of the old men, this particular old man here, was fascinating to speak to, really fascinating. He, 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 he'd been poaching since he was a little boy. He was taught by his father how to poach and how to catch what they called bush meat. And um, what they do in this cultural village here, I, where there, there was a marriage ceremony. No, that's not my wife. And no, that's not me getting married. But um, they go through a little marriage ceremony, and they, 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 it, it's, it's fascinating for me as a South African to learn the other African cultures. And then this was, was so wonderful. You see that we're handing over a goat. It's a nanny goat. And even the guys in the background, you can see how excited they are. This particular young man is the son of one of the former poachers. And um, every time I bring a group to Rwanda, and this is when, when people say, Oh, you know, I don't want to go with them, with them it's too expensive. This is the extra expense that we put in to buy a goat to pass it on to the, um, on to the, on, on, on to the village. And at the, at the back, as I say, we had the people dancing there. Okay, the, the, there's a question that came up that I'll answer shortly. Um, the, it, 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 as, as I said, it's a, it's a great community effort that, that we give back to the community. A question that, that, that came up is, 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 is very interesting. The gorillas weren't the, were not that much poached by the, 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 by the poachers that we see. They poach mostly what they call bush meat. Um, the, 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 the gorilla poaching is mostly in um, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And unfortunately, what they do there, they will kill a whole troop. Uh, or a whole, you know, a whole troop of gorillas, so that they um, they can take the uh, they, they can take the, the the baby and raise the baby, 
and um, and then there was there, there are some forms of, of poaching where they will actually cut the gorilla's hands off as a form of good luck. I don't know much about that. I tend not to want to, but that is um, as I said, most of these poachers were, were were living up in the mountains that you see in the background, and they were um, and they were um, oopsie daisy. And um, that's where they were hunting the, the antelope and, and, and the buffalo and, as they call it, bushmeat. All right, somebody asked, who is the girl with you? Oh, she'd be thrilled to be called a girl. That is Jamie Bundy. Jamie works for Taba African Safaris. And at present, she's in San Francisco doing a presentation for us for a wine and golfing safari that she'll be leading later in the year. <clears throat> right, as I mentioned, from Rwanda, we then go to, to Tanzania. And uh, we fly in little aeroplanes. And when, if, if anybody's scared of small flights, uh, <clears throat> don't, don't don't worry. We, we we fly in little aeroplanes, as you can see. And just, just and just know that we have professional staff who are going to fly you there and take care of you. Oh no, but that's the wrong guy. Sorry. Oops. Let's go on. <laughs> we have professional staff who will fly you. And if you see the bottom part of the aeroplane where the where, where the marker is now. That is the belly of the plane. That is why I only allow you the small bags that we provide you when you travel with us. Um, this is two, two of the North Face bags that we have. We, we are actually using um, Eagle Creek bags at the moment. Um, but we, 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 size and weight make our, 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 our what determine what, what and, and, and how we pack. Right, as I mentioned, when we get into, into when we fly from Chigali, We'll fly a, a, a small plane to to Mwanza. Mwanza is on, on Lake Victoria, and then from in Lake in, in Mwanza we will do our, our passport um, stamping and get our visa. And then from Mwanza we fly again to the Northern Serengeti, and this is where we have the privilege of staying in the private lodges. If you stay down in the in the larger lodges. You ha it's a long drive to get up up to the Mara River, so that's why so, why so we stay in the private lodges, and this particular the particular groups that I'm leading this year, the four of them, and the two next next year, the one that Tina's doing, we stay right up top here on the Mara River. There we go. <clears throat> Again, this is a, a bit a picture of it coming out of Rwanda up into northern Serengeti, and then while I have this map here, I'll just show you quickly. We go. We we will be be um, up in the northern Serengeti, and then we'll go, we're going to drive because we, we we've gone there for the migration. This is where we can see the big five very easily, and, and in fact leopard um, leopard and cheetah as well. We will then fly from 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 northern Serengeti to the Narungora crater. We're spending two nights in the Narungora uh, or above the Narungora crater in a Serena property, and then from there we're going to drive from from Narungora down to Lake Manyara. And uh, between Lake Manyara and Taringiri, we play, we're staying in a place called Marumboy, which I will show you shortly. <clears throat> this is the, the is the map of the migration. And if, if if anybody of if any of you want this particular slide, just email me, and I will send it to you. Um, but this show this shows you. You know, I had somebody really insistent that they wanted to 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 join me on a group in June, to to do the mass uh, to to do. To do the the, the Mara um, crossing, you can see where they are in June. They haven't gone up. They haven't. They haven't. They're not crossing over the Mara River yet. You you get this July, August, June, July, August. The the crossing here, September, October. They're coming down uh, across uh, across the Sand River and the Mara River. And of course, January, February, <coughs> December to to April. In fact, this is where you have the carving. You have this huge, huge these these huge herds of wildebeest. <clears throat> You'll see them them carving together with the zebra. One one thing that you will experience when you're in the Serengeti is is the serenity. One of the things that we really insist on, and I'm, I'm sure I've got some more pictures that I will show you of sunsets, but that is just is what we what we do in Africa. We stop, okay, we pr we we pull out the G and T, and we listen to the sunset. These are the vehicles that we use. And um, as you can see, the, the, the spare wheel at the back there is going to have the Entaba cover on it. This is my lovely wife. Anybody else that you'll know in the vehicle, there's um, Nancy Stevens in the back. There's Jamie in the back there. But this, these are the pop-up tops that we have. And they're very useful, especially when you have the, the, the tsetse flies around. Um, 
inoculation for East Africa, yes, you do need yellow fever. Um, if you are unable due to age or any um, medical issue, if you are un un unable to have uh, the, the yellow fever vaccine, you can get a letter from your doctor. These are just some of the, the bridges and the roads and the, and the entrances that we have in the Serengeti. Once we get down to the Sopa Lodge, which is on the, um, in, the, in the Serengeti, some of the, the, the people that we are privileged to meet is the, the, um, at, at the lodge, the staff. You know, we, we have a personal relationship with these guys. These are some of the rooms that we'll be staying in. Oh dear, you know guys, I've, I've forgotten, hey, this, 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 this webinar, I can click faster than what the, the, the slides come up, so forgive me if I run ahead and talk about something that hasn't come up yet. What's so beautiful about this is when you, you're staying at this lodge and you look over the vast um, Serengeti, um, you know, we were sitting here and we actually heard lion roaring one night, and um, that's real, you know, you're sitting in the middle of the Serengeti. Any more questions while we're going, guys? We've got Tom would like the migration slide. Tom, I will surely send it to you and anything else you'd like as well. Hey? Again, just a view outside the lodge. And this is what I talk about, a room with a view. When, you, when, you're, in, when, when, you're, when you're in your bedroom, this is just looking out of your bedroom straight into, deep into the Serengeti. And um, it's, it's, it's an experience and it's, it's fun to have. There we go. Can you guys hear the Serengeti? I like to show the room types that we have because some, for, for so many presentations that I did when I started in Taba, I just had animals, animals, and animals. And people said to me, well, what is the accommodation that we stay in? So, so bear with me as I go through a couple of, of slides of the accommodation. Uh, the facilities are very good. Uh, people ask about drinking the water. One of the reasons that I would caution drink, drinking water is very often your stomach is not used to, to good natural um, spring water, uh, especially if you live in one of the, of, of the cities or the suburbs. Um, but but the, everywhere you go, everything that is put in a plate in front of you, you can eat, and water you can drink in every lodge that we stay in. And again, if, for those ladies who are with me, have a look at the wonderful bathrooms that we have, the robes, um, and again, just um, the, the, the fact that we do go that, that, that one step extra to make sure that you, you, you're just comfortable. Dawn, good to see you here. Thank you so much for joining me last year. And then one of the most important things is a, is a well-stocked bar. Um, which is coming up shortly. That was the bathroom you saw there, but a well-stocked bar. And what I really enjoy is, is before the meal, um, what they encourage you to do is to go and choose a bottle of wine. And instead of, 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 of looking at the waiter and looking at the wine list and kind of running your, da your finger down the side and saying, well, what should I want price-wise, you can go and choose a bottle of wine. And um, this really, most of the fact, almost all the wines are from South Africa. So any of you who are familiar with South African wines, it's a great, a great time to, um, to, to wet the pellet. All right, guys, and what's such great fun is when, is when we go out, does the, do the rooms all have natural air? Uh, um, okay, some conditions, some, some questions are coming in. All the rooms are air conditioned. The rooms are all air conditioned except when we stay in the tents. Um, the tents will have fans, but again, there's a, this is glamping, it's not camping. Nobody's crawling in through, you know, through a little pub tent, but all the rooms do have air conditioning. They actually do have, of course, the air conditioner works as a heater as well. Now, guys, when you are very privileged and very lucky and extremely fortunate, you could have a moment like this. This was a, was a leopard that had, had killed a, a, a Thompson's gazelle, and uh, I had the leopard, a cheetah that had killed Tom, Thompson's gazelle and um, was feeding, and the cubs were feeding on it under the shade of one of the vehicles that we use. And, um, you know, again, as I say, this is, is, this is not on the menu every time. We would be grateful if we saw it. Some lovely photographs that my wife took of the cheetah and her cubs a few years later once they'd grown. And, again, this is something that we do see up in the, in the northern Serengeti. Yeah. 
There we go. Just the, the youngster standing on that log. It was so pretty. He was looking directly at the camera. And um, again, you know, those photographs could be yours and those ooh ah moments are just something that, that we live for. Once we start to see the, the, the massing of the migration and the animals coming together and, and getting ready to go over the rivers, it's really quite exciting. It's the noise. It's the throb. Um, you'll often have, get stuck in a whole herd of wildebeest or of, of zebra as they are massing to cross over the Mara River. And as, you, as you, you're sitting and, and, and waiting for the animals to, to start crossing, um, the noise that comes out of it. And for those of you who've, join, who've joined me, will it, you, you know the noise that wildebeest can make. They will carry on and on and on right through the night. And then if and when we are privileged enough to see an actual crossing where the, where the wildebeest will jump into the mighty Maru River and start swimming across it, um, you know, yes, there are crocodiles, and unfortunately, a lot of the TV channels have, have, have um, overdone the, 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 um, the, the gory details of the crocodiles catching them. But guys, you can imagine there's not too many crocodiles in the middle of that herd right now. What I will show you is some is some some blood on the on, on a horn of one of the animals here. What happens with the with the anim, with the wildebeest when they're crossing at this stage? There's a lot of fighting that's going uh, that that's going on. There's a lot of territorial dispute because their territories are are moving and shrinking the whole time as they as they as they're moving along. So there's a lot of fighting, and you'll often find one or two of them losing a horn. But as I mentioned to you, you do have the wily crocodile waiting and what they will do is they will generally go for an animal that has broken um, its leg or, or that is, is in distress. Um, they're not going to waste their time and spend a lot of time on, on an animal that they've got to fight for. Now I personally have not been privileged enough to see this but there have been recorded incidences of um, crocodiles that have taken animals where hippos have chased the crocodile away and um, there have been, there've been numerous recordings of hippos trying to give an, a, a wounded animal mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But um, as I say, that, that, that I'm, I'm still yet to see. <clears throat> Some of, 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 of the scenery that we see, the, 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 the elephants walking through the, the early morning mist, is really a, a, a great, a great um, time that we have. I'm going to leave the slide. Um, just a minute. <laughs> Somebody said here, okay, including all the slides, damn, just amazing. Were, were you parked during this? Yes, I was. I was actually parked on the other side of that. And um, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was an experience that, you know, I, 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 I haul out the box of Kleenex and say thank, and, and say thank you. Oops, it is. Um, <clears throat> this is the, the reality of, 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 of being in the bush when I was down in Tarangiri. Um, this is one of the game reserves that, as I say, you'll get to in, Masa, uh, in, in um, Lake Manyara. This is one of the, the photographs that I took sitting in the vehicle, not even standing up, just leaning my camera out and taking a photograph of this beautiful lady. Right, when we get into the Narungora Crater, we actually stay in the Narungora Sopa Lodge. And um, this is right on top of the crater. And um, one of the, just, it's, it's absolutely breathtaking. If you can, by any chance, get, have, a, have a clear day, it is something to behold. Unfortunately, there is very often mist. You can see the jacket that the general manager was wearing, and um, he's certainly looking forward to the groups that we're bringing this year, and of course next year as well. Still and I did site inspections for, for these groups. We actually visited every one of the lodges that we stay at, and we took photographs, and of course we, 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 we've chatted to the staff, and they're looking forward to seeing us when we get there. Um, that, that swimming pool in the evening, you can imagine a hot day out in the, in, in the wild and taking a look o over the, the, the Serengeti. Again, just showing you some of the room types. And when we get to the slide with the window and you have a look, that is your view that nobody else in the, in the world, except your neighbor next door, I suppose, hey, has got that, that, that view of the, of, of, of the Narangora Crater. This is the Narangora Crater that we have, the, the floor of the crater. And actually, when we fly in, we fly in over the crater. And I've done this a couple of times. I've, fl I've, I've driven and I've flown. And, and flying is by far the nicer, the nicer way to see the crater. Um, some of the itineraries uh, that try and save money will drive down through, through the Serengeti, from the northern Serengeti, right down to the Narangora crater. I have done that many times, and it's, it's, it's terrible. It is not nice. The roads are very bad. 
and honestly flying. Um, you get to, 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 to the Narangora crater, you're relaxed, you have this wonderful view into the crater, and as I say, this is the crater floor that we're seeing. All right. And then one of the, one of the great, the great um, excitements that we have is when we get down into the crater. Um, I love the crater the most. Good. Um, I, I, one of the, the <laughs> Sarah, you love the crater. That's good, eh? Um, <clears throat> one of the, 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 the cultural experiences that we have is meeting the Maasai people. And again, um, guys, you know, Maasai is not one group of people. There are different groups of Maasai. And this is a photograph I took. You can see it was just starting to rain. And just the friendliness of this guy welcoming us to his village, saying, come to my village. And it, it is a little bit Hollywood to a degree, the way they have their, 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 bra their bracelets and necklaces hanging on the trees. But, you know, some of us can't resist buying them, and we run away with them. We, we, we buy them and walk away. But it's, a, it's again, just to get in, in, immersed in the culture is, um, is, 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 is an education for us. It's, it's good for us to, to see the other side. And guys, please remember all the photographs that you see were taken by Stella or myself. Hey, eh? here we go. And what's 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 really exciting is in in the villages we we will have the the men doing doing a dance for us, and we'll have the, the the ladies doing a separate dance. I don't have too many pictures of the jumpers here, but um, this is where some of these guys will, will jump. They 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 stand from from standing f firm on, on on terra firma. And they will jump four, five, six foot in the air, and it's a, it's you know, to see the young boys as they're learning to come into the, into the, into the community, how the old men are, te are teaching them is just really educational. <clears throat> when we go down to, um, when we, we come towards the end of the itinerary and we drive through, um, from from um, the Narangora crater, down past Arusha to 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 Tarangiri. Tarangiri National Park, as well as um, Lake Manyara, we stay in a lodge called Maramboy. There are many lodges in that area. These particular itineraries, we are staying in Maramboy. And why I love Maramboy is it is between between Lake Lake Manyara and Tarangiri. And again, these are not just names that I'm throwing out there because I can pronounce them. This is a beautiful area where you'll have the flamingos up in, in Lake Manyara, and you'll have them flying across here as they move off. Um, can you imagine lying in this infinity pool with your liquid with your liquid lunch and watching the animals walking past, um, or in the evening just as the sun's going going down, sitting here with the G and T, and and watching your own your own your own game drive. Again, just some of the of the um, furbishments. As I say, in the background there, that is actually Lake Manyara, and Lake Manyara is very well known for its flamingos. In fact, for large, large groups of, of, of flocks of flamingos and pelicans. Um, I, when I put this slide in, I thought, you know, this could probably be, be somewhere in Florida. Look, you know, look at the, the palm trees. But um, this is where we sit and have breakfast in the morning and have lunch in the evenings. We we'll have the lounge. No, no air conditioning in this lounge. We have we use natural air. Yet when we get to the rooms, I'll show you. The path, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I put this picture in was to show you how well paved the paths are. So anybody with walking difficulties, um, we, we do take care of you. Even the paths are to the, uh, to the different um, um, huts that we stay in are well maintained. We do ask that after dark, uh, well, in the early morning and the late afternoon or late evening going back to and from, that you actually take one of the Maasai guards with you when you go to your hut because you are in a game reserve. So just understand that, that Mother Nature is, is also all around you. That's a view from the front, not sitting there in the early morning drinking your coffee, or in the evening having a G&T and watching the, the African sun go down. Um, all, the, all, all the rooms have, have um, solar water heater. They also have um, generator electricity. So you can have your hair dryers and everything, all, all the other amenities that you need. Um, you will see a mosquito netting in this particular picture. Um, I personally do not recommend um, taking malaria prophylaxis. Um, that's a long story that I will explain individually to each person as they contact me. But um, prevention is better than cure. I would rather that you, you take 
um, any one of the off products or any one of the deep products, rather than taking a pill to try and stop yourself from getting sick from, if you would possibly get malaria, which I will not, which I don't think you will. Right, the bathrooms again, I mentioned, very tasteful. Um, then from then from from once we finished with the uh, with the uh, the um, with the game drives in Tarangiri and this and and um, the and Lake Manyara area, we go back through Arusha on our way to to the airport, and this is one of the the villages that we stop at, known as Shanga Shanga, and this is an amazing experience that you will have where the community are helping um, people with physical handicaps. One of the ladies that you'll see short, shortly is, is completely deaf, and they've created a spinning wheel for her um, out of a bicycle wheel and a, or a bicycle wheel and a cog, and she is she is weaving wool. Um, there's another lady who was a, a, a chap that was was threading beads. Um, this particular gentleman here, I'm not sure what his ailment was, but he cannot stand, and he li they, they, they they carry him to work. You can see him lying down here. They carry him to work. And these are all his paintings, Tinga Tinga paintings. These are his paintings that he's painted. And he was actually training his, his, his helper. So whatever debilitating disease he had, he knows his, his days are counted. And he was training his helper to do, to do the paintings he does. And you know, you just stand there and you think, you're complaining about a back ache. Oh, my back is aching. This guy would do anything to have a back that could support his body. This is a nice place that when we, we, at our last few stops, we buy some of the Tanzanian coffee to make sure we take that, that, that home with us. Then what we'll often do is we'll have a day room because we, we, cause our flight is in the late evening out of, Lake Kil, out of um, Kilimanjaro Airport, which is Jairo. We spend a, a day in the, in the Kia Lodge, or the, the afternoon in the Kia Lodge. And this is a wonderful time. The Kia Lodge is well, well positioned that we can take photographs of Mount Kilimanjaro. And again, for those who, who are still aspiring to do Kilimanjaro, it's a must. And Gaylene, I promise you, my girl, I will make sure you get up there sometime, but, yes, I, but I won't take you. <laughs> Three times is enough for me. <clears throat> again, as I say, this is just a shot of the day room that we have. But what we do when we take you to East Africa, again, guys, remember, it's authentic, it's memorable, it's intimate, it's, it's secure, and, and it's unique. As I come to the end of the presentation, <coughs> to show you one of the rooms types there. All right, I'm going to open up the, the, the floor to questions again. This is the end of the presentation I've, I, I've done. Um, again, my name is Robin Mountain, my wife is Stella, and our company is Intaba African Safaris. And uh, what I did tonight was to highlight one of the itineraries that we do for um, East Africa, which includes the countries of Rwanda and Tanzania, and what you are likely to see and experience with us when you come on a safari. Um, if anybody would, would like to pop some questions in there. How far in advance do you have to book? Um, a year out is, is probably the best. Um, I have two groups open for next year um, in August, starting in the beginning of, of August and going through August, uh, where I've got groups going, going back to back. I have space in those. Unfortunately, this year, everything is, so, is sold out. Um, I can book in 2019 if that would suit, suit anybody. But as I say, um, Tina uh, has, got, has, has got a group that is interested in doing um, something in August. I've got two groups and I can handle up to about 24 people, two groups of 12. So get hold of me as soon as you can. Let, any, let your friends know that um, we don't send you to Africa, hey? We take you. All right, thank you. That was great. Can you do one for Botswana? I would certainly do that. And thank you very much for asking. Who asked that question? I really appreciate that. Janice Underwood. Janice, thank you so much for, your, for, for asking for one for Botswana. And I will call her Mrs. Stella. Mrs. Stella is very busy doing itineraries for everybody else at the moment. But I will get Stella to do that presentation with me. Stella, I often tease her and I, and I, I call her Miss Botswana. The question is, what currency is used in Rwanda and Tanzania? You guys will laugh at me. Use the, use the US dollar. They use shillings and they use, I, I, will, I don't want to, want to they use a, I, I'm not going to say 
krona, but they do use a, 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 a different currency in Rwanda. I apologize, I don't have that on the tip of my tongue, but um, I, I, used, I used US dollars um, throughout. <clears throat> Robin, don't forget to, to say about downloading the brochure. Okay, um, <laughs> where's the brochure? Oh my goodness, okay, Gay, Gaylene has, has got, has got um, brochures that you can download. It's the Entava African Safari brochure, which just basically um, explains the ethos of our company, which is authentic, memorable, intimate, secure, and unique, and then the honeymoon brochure as well. Guys, for any of you who are listening, I actually bumped into some honeymoon um, clients, not mine, on, on one of the gorilla walks and it was the cutest thing to see him and her on their honeymoon getting so excited to experience something like that. <coughs> Sarah, you ask, um, do you book tours that would allow children? I'd like you to specify the age of the children, but we do not allow children under teen, under 13 to walk the gorillas. That is for everybody's safety. Um, you can imagine you wo you're working with primates that haven't really interacted with small children yet. So that's that's something. <coughs> Blame the pollen and the allergies, guys. It's not me. Um, the 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 um, children are, are are not allowed to, to walk on the gorillas, but what um, certainly on the private safaris on in Tanzania and South Africa, Botswana, Namibia. We absolutely encourage multi-generational. Um, Stella and I are leading groups in 2000, in December this year, where we have children. We would be 13 and 2000, he would be 14. Sarah, that sounds fantastic. Um, let's, let's look at doing something, he would be 13, but okay, let's look at doing something at the end of 2018. Um, 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 if we can do 19, please, please keep in touch with, um, with us, Sarah. You have our details, and having having been been married in Tanzania, I'm sure you'd love to take your offspring back there. Guys, I'm going to start to wind up and just just to, to thank you so much for for being with us, for for um, encouraging us with Intaba tours, and uh, as I say, um, we we are who we are because of people like you who we work with. So thank you very much and all the best, everybody. Okay, talk? Okay. Yeah, um, um, Gaylin wants to have a quick word. <laughs> um, we mentioned the uh, honeymooners earlier, and I just wanted to mention that we have a honeymoon registry for Intaba. Um, so if you know a couple that are going to get married and they don't want to register at Walmart or Target or something and they would rather travel, um, we have that option on our website. So go check that out under the Honeymoon tab. Thank you very much. And that is a tireless work of, of Gaylene and the team that she has that put that, that, that together. So we really, um, I thank you, Gaylene, and you're quite right. Um, Tina, thank you very much. Thank you to your daughter who is um, doing a honeymoon through our honeymoon registry. And guys, as I say, that is the greatest um, gift that you can, can give your children. Once again. Salagashli and thank you very much, eh?